welcome along to our SBS 2003 installation series. This is part 5 which will cover the connection to the internet. We'd like to say help us to continue to make material like this available. If you feel that this video has been beneficial we would ask you to make a donation towards helping us improve what we currently provide. All donations, no matter how small, will ensure the continuation improvement of our offerings. To make a donation, please go to donation.satinalliance.com.au At the completion of our last video, we had installed all the small business software, rebooted the system, and been presented with the to-do list. This is what we can see shown on the screen now. Normally we would work through this screen one at a time by pressing the start option and then when we finish click the done. So for the time being we'll skip viewing the best security practices and look at connecting to the internet. To do this simply click the start button and the connect to the internet wizard will launch. Select next to continue. Here we can select the connection type we have. The majority of times it's going to be broadband, so again we hit the next key to continue. Now we can choose the sort of broadband connection that we're going to have. In our case, as you can see, we've actually got two network cards and ISA firewall on our SBS. So we're going to set up for a two network card solution where one network card is connected to the internal LAN, the other network card is connected to our broadband router. So if you pull down the list here, we'll see that we have the option to select a local router with an IP address, a connection that uses PPPoE, or a direct broadband connection. In our case, we'll select the direct broadband connection. We can read some more information about what this is. We can also select the option here to display the network diagram. This will give us a better idea of exactly how it's laid out. So in our case we see we have the small business server, one network card connected to the internal LAN, the other network card connected to a broadband connection which is exactly what we've got. At any point during this wizard you'll see the option to select more information. This will pop up a help screen that will give us more information and make it easier to understand how we configure the internet. Select the next button to continue. Because we have two network cards in our system we now need to designate which card is connected to which network. In our case we're going to connect the external connector to the ISP while the internal one remains connected to our internal network. These are not the default names. Prior to this I have gone down here, selected the network connections and gone in and made modifications. I've called one external and one internal to help me better identify exactly which network card is which. So now that we know we press the next button to continue. Since we have a direct broadband connection, we are now prompted to select our default gateway. In our case, we know that the router or the broadband connection is an IP address of 192.168.0.1. Here we would put in our preferred DNS number, which would be provided by our ISP. Once we've put this information in, we hit the next button to continue. We choose here whether we want to enable or disable the firewall. Since we have ISA on the box and we do want to use it to protect our network, we'll select enable firewall. We can now choose the services that will be inbound to our SBS box. So we're going to allow emails in, we're going to allow VPNs or virtual private networking. We're going to allow perhaps terminal services and FTP. If I want I can go down here and I can add additional ports or a service. Typically this might be something like PC Anywhere or VNC. In this case I'm only going to enable inbound services of email 
and VPN. Select next to continue. Now I can choose the web services that will that I'll be using on my small business server. I want my performance reports, my Outlook web access, remote web workplace, mobile access, Outlook over the internet, and my SharePoint intranet site. However, normally I would not recommend connecting or using a business website on your small business server. It's much easier and far more secure to have this hosted by a third party on an ISP. Again, once we've selected these options, we select next to continue. Now we need to create a web server certificate. This provides encrypted SSL traffic between the client and the small business server for remote access. Small business server creates its own self-signed certificate at no additional cost. All we have to do here is basically give the certificate a name. We can, however, if we've purchased a certificate from a trusted authority, we can enter the information in here. When we've selected our information, hit next to continue. We choose to enable internet email because we're going to use our small business server to host emails for our domain. Select the option and hit next. Normally we want to route our emails using DNS. However, we can choose to forward our emails to an ISP. This basically allows us to do some filtering for spam and viruses. We can choose whether to use the POP connector for mailboxes or we want to use Exchange. Normally we're going to have the mail delivered directly to the server, but again, we could have it delivered from the ISP via a number of commands. The reason you'd select the second option may be for improved anti-spam and antivirus handling. Normally we just select exchange and hit next. We enter the domain name of the emails that we'll be hosting. So example, someone at domain.com.au. We hit the next button to continue. We now want to configure exchange to remove potentially threatening attachments. You can scroll through the list here and see the number that are by default. We can add additional ones. We can select to edit anything that is already in the list. We can choose to remove some from the list. And if we want, we can choose to save the removed attachment into a folder that we nominate. Select next to continue. And we've now finished, just about finished. You can see here all the information that we've created and answered in the wizard is summarized here. You can copy and paste this to somewhere for your documentation, or we can click here to have it printed or emailed. Now that we're finished, we simply click the finish button to activate the wizard to make the configuration changes that we've selected. Using a wizard to configure the internet and email options means that we get a consistent result every time we run the wizard. Be assured that you can run the rerun the wizard as many times as you want, knowing full well that it will follow through the same steps each and every time to ensure a consistent output. It's very important that the wizards are used to configure small business server, otherwise errors will occur that will be very hard to troubleshoot in the future. Once the wizard is complete, you'll see the options that denote whether it has been the wizard has run successfully. Um, in this case, it has with all green ticks. Um, if it hasn't, you'll need to check the logs. Now that we're finished, we're asked about our password policies. So we'll not enable this for the time being. We'll come back to this. This should now mean that we can access the internet. And the first option that you probably should choose is to run Windows Update to install the patches that are required from Microsoft. Once again, this video has been a presentation from Saturn Alliance. My name is Robert. If you have any questions, please email me directly via robert at satinalliance.com.au. And again, if you think this video has been a benefit to you, please go to donation.satinalliance.com.au. Thank you very much.